Hello, everybody. Once again, it is time for another season of Inside Wofford Basketball with head coach Dwight Perry, brought to you by Yokohama. Well, I'll tell you what, the uh, the Terriers, since we last convened, have welcomed six newcomers. They have been forged by fire with a ton of road games thus far. Wofford, at the time of this taping, stands 5-5 five and five overall, winners of their last three on the road. So, Coach, I guess the, the first thing we, we get to is it's such a prog uh, process, and, and a process that began back in summer when these guys arrived on campus. Throughout it all, what's your, what's your view of, of how things have gone over the past three or four months, and certainly since we started playing games in November? Yeah, overall, I've been very pleased with the progress. You mentioned, obviously, six newcomers, right? You have a collection of new players, and you combine them with some of our returners, and you have a brand new team. And I think, obviously, like in any season, you have ups and downs. But overall, I've been really pleased with, again, the progress and the growth of our whole program. Well, when coming up, we will take a look back at the first 10 games of non-conference play. We'll also introduce you to a few of those newcomers that we're talking about wearing a Wofford uniform and take a look ahead to the final non-conference games and the beginning of Southern Conference play in January. It's all ahead here on Inside Wofford Basketball. Black and gold. Bold. A victory story about to be told. Grit, toughness, and tenacity. A hub of hard work in Hub City. We're on these wins like dogs on a bone. In the zone. Our place, in your face, won't leave you alone. Strength, speed, fire, true. I'm sorry, do these things trouble you? We're Wofford College. We fly the W. Ingles, proud partner of the Wofford Terriers. Welcome back. So as the season commenced, Dwight Perry had a, a, a big job, well, one of many big jobs to do. Uh, you had to replace about two-thirds of your scoring and rebounding from last year. You also had to replace some big-time leadership with the graduation of B.J. Mack and Messiah Jones. During the summer practice, during preseason practice, did you start to see some leaders emerge on this team? Absolutely. I think, you know, again, you can never truly replace a B.J. Mack or a Messiah Jones. You know, those guys and what they've meant to this program, the contributions on and off the court, right, are really invaluable. And so, you know, the biggest thing is you try to find ways for your guys to be their true selves and grow within their leadership roles that work for them. Mm -hmm. And 100%, you know, right off the bat, you know, a couple guys that we have returning, right, really, honestly, three with Corey Tripp, you know, Jackson Silvels and Kyler Falowich, all three of those guys, I think, emerged as, you know, leaders for us on our team and our program starting in the summer. And, you know, I think quick Quickly, too, from transitioning from the summer and into the preseason, you know, you'd be able to add Dylan Bailey to that group. And I think those four, you know, group of guys combined with the rest of our team in their own ways have really helped elevate our program from a leadership standpoint. Yeah, no seniors on this team this year. And as the season began, you have a, a really a hard fought, really good win against High Point here and uh, a team that's going to do some things in their conference for sure. And then you go on the road to test yourself against Power Five teams, Tennessee, Virginia Tech, Tennessee. I think you played really well for a half. They're one of the best teams in the country. They were ranked number seven when we played them. And then Virginia Tech, maybe not the, the, the end result that you were looking for in those games, but what do those sort of tests do for your guys? Because the end goal is conference play, and you want to kind of, it's kind of like iron sharpens iron in, in a sense, isn't it? 100%. And, you know, obviously those two teams are, A, they're extremely well coached. Uh, they both teams play really hard and they're really physical and they obviously are definitely have no shortage of talent and so for us you know it was a great test for our guys obviously the end result and the win loss column uh, didn't reflect you know what we wanted it to but at the end of the day again those experiences and those games test you in ways that you really can't get in any other avenue against other teams you know maybe necessarily in the non-conference slate that prepare you for conference play obviously the game of Virginia Tech was big from a Wofford standpoint. First game against 
past. Former head coach Mike Young, we caught up with both Coach Young and Coach Perry before that meeting in Blacksburg. I spent 30 wonderful years there. An unbelievable period of my life. I met my wife there. I had the opportunity to coach there. My children were born there. But uh, in our world, it's the next game. Um, I have enjoyed watching uh, Wofford play. Uh, I really like what they're doing. They've got good players. They play really hard. Uh, it's just a matter of winning the game, man. It's just a matter of trying to find a way to win. I've always admired uh, Dwight. You know, I can remember uh, when he uh, when he went to Furman. We had uh, several really good games during his time there. And then uh, I guess Dwight came to uh, Wofford the same year I came here. Uh, has done a really good job. He's doing a really good job in his first year as head coach, I tell you that. in a really hostile environment, right in a big time atmosphere. Obviously, Coach Young has done a lot of great things, but here at Wofford, you know, he and Coach Young are obviously, right, uh, done a lot of great things and mean a lot to Wofford for us, you know, once the ball is tipped. He's really just trying to really win a game against a really good opponent. Yeah, I mean, I think he's a, he's a great basketball coach. Obviously, you know, when you talk to people that have played for him and have worked for him, you know, he's obviously a really good person. So when you have those two attributes, if you're a great basketball coach, you're a great person, you see great things happen, and obviously his career is a big thing. And also, certainly, Coach, during those games against Tennessee and Virginia Tech, we, we saw some of those newcomers emerge. Chase Cormier still shooting the lights out. I think he's he needs a couple more attempts to be one of the national leaders in field goal and three-point percentage. And also, you mentioned Dylan Bailey, who has managed to throw his body around and get to the free-throw line more than twice as much as any other Terrier. Implementing those two newcomers, what has that process been like? You know, to be quite honest with you, it is, I wouldn't say seamless, you know, because that would do a disservice to the work that our team has put in to ingratiate themselves, you know, with those guys. But I will say those are two of the, the best teammates I've been around. And so, you know, that process has been extremely enjoyable, not just for myself, but our entire staff and all of our, our whole team. Because those two guys, above all else, they're great teammates and they want to win. And I think anytime you have a player in this situation, two players that have those characteristics, you know, it just makes that whole process that much more enjoyable. And then we got our passports out and went to Canada. It was a little chilly. It was a really nice atmosphere when we played in Laval just outside of Montreal. A lot of kids there, a lot of excitement. Yeah. and. You look back at the at the three games, which didn't go Wofford's way, 0-3 on the trip, but three close games. Wofford clawed their way back in a couple of them. And as I look back at, at the competition you faced there, Dwight, Canisius, UNC Asheville, and Lipscomb, got a funny feeling that all three of those teams are going to be battling for conference championships in their various leagues. So the trip as a whole, what, what truths became self-evident about Wofford basketball and kind of reinforcing the message of, guys, this is how we want to play and this is how we need to play moving forward? Yeah, it was a true learning experience. And I think any time as competitors and obviously as coaches, you want that experience and that growth to come, right, and end up in resulting in wins. And unfortunately, that's not always in the cards. But I think, right, the experience our players got from being around each other, right, that um, that much amount of time and on top of that like you spoke about the competition those are three teams that all have a chance to win their respective leagues Canisius, UNC Asheville, Lipscomb they all play different style of play they're all extremely talented and well coached and you know above all else it was a game after a game after a game three days in a row which when you break it down right three games in a row against three well coached teams that are extremely talented you could have just said that was our SOCON, you know, tournament. Mm -hmm. And so, right, intentional on our part, we wanted to put our guys through that process. And obviously, again, the wins, you know, didn't show up. But I also think our team, right, with no disrespect to the opponents we played, our team had to figure out what it takes to truly win. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when you have a new team and you have a young team and you have new pieces, I think people can assume, well, everyone just knows how to win and what it takes to win at the end of the games and to close games out. And unfortunately, our team had to go through that process in Montreal. 
But on the flip side that I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit, you know, I think here recently we've been able to reap the benefits of those learning experiences. And at the end of the day, that's what you want as a coach is you want to put your team in situations where they're tested and they're stretched but they also have the ability to respond and show that they can grow from those experiences. Did you eat any poutine while you were up there? Well, that was the problem right there. There you go. (laughs) Never again, never again. Poutine is off the menu now on all Terrier road trips. Well, speaking of the road, when we come back, the Terriers hit their stride in their last three games. That's coming up next. It doesn't matter if you're active on the road or in the gym. Your body is your strongest tool. Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine Institute is here to push you to the next level. With partnerships across Spartanburg County Schools, we're here when it happens. We diagnose, treat, and heal at the Sports Medicine Institute to get you back and active, in the gym, in the game, and to the next level. We never quit because you never quit. Nothing beats the power of Ford Truck Month because only one truck can be the best selling in America for 46 straight years. Ford F Series. Only one has best in class payload, best in class horsepower. And when you combine this legendary power with the latest technology, you get the only truck built Ford Tough. It's Truck Month. Hurry in today for great selection in stock and ready for delivery. Now get 3.9% financing for 60 months plus up to 2,500 cash back on select F 150 trucks. You can always count on the crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light. Just like you can always count on Always Game Gary. No bar is too far. No wing sauce is too hot. Not for Gary. Gary is the man. He's nothing like Keith. Keith never wants to do anything. Why are we even talking about Keith? Always Game Gary is famous among friends. He deserves a Bud Light. Enjoy responsibly Bud Light Beer, AB St. Louis, Missouri. And hey, welcome back to Inside Wofford Basketball with head coach Dwight Perry, brought to you by Yokohama. I'm Jim Noble. So a three-game road stretch after the return from Canada. It began at Middle Tennessee. Dwight, that's another long, athletic, Conference USA team that, that certainly has the potential to disrupt you on both ends of the floor. Wofford falls behind by nine in the second half, and then it was like, it was like a, a switch got flipped. You guys dug in defensively, crashed the glass, quite frankly, played harder than the other team. You pull out an overtime win. What happened there? What happened in that effort? And, and, and do you think it made this team realize something about themselves? I think our team trusted the process. That's something we've stressed to our team. We want to play harder than the other team. We want to be more mentally and physically tougher than the other team. And we want to play more together. And, you know, the biggest thing for us that we stress all the time is it's a 40-minute battle to do that. And Middle Tennessee State was a great example of that. You know, it doesn't always work out to where the first five minutes or 10 or 20, or in this situation, the first 30 minutes may not be going your way, and the score may not indicate that. But if you stick with that plan and that process at the end of the 40 minutes or in the Middle Tennessee State game, 45 minutes, right, chances are it usually goes in your favor. And I think, again, not to, not to beat a dead horse, I thought the Montreal trip, that experience really helped our guys understand what it meant to stick with that plan over the course of a whole game. And to your point, it was great to see that light bulb, you know, go off in their head. And again, we all know winning and losing, you can play well in a loss and you cannot play well in a win. But it was great to see our guys play and stick to that process and be rewarded with a great road victory against a great team. And then what you want to do to take things to the next level is repeat those efforts. And you do that at Gardner-Webb in Coastal Carolina. Jackson Civil starts hitting outside shots. You know, uh, Chase Martin's doing all the dirty work. Dylan Bailey's doing what he does. Kyler Filowich has maybe been the best unsung hero in the entire conference this year. And Corey Tripp, I could go down the list and list. Corey's not turning the ball over, ever. So those two efforts, I think, just reinforce that message of if we move the ball offensively, if we play unselfish basketball and we dig it on defense, man, that stuff's going to play whether you're at home or on the road. 100%. And obviously, you really uh, you spoke and you really hit a lot of specifics there. I think from a, of a basic level, you know, there's no secret 
we had to get better defensively from the beginning of the season, and we have to do a better job of taking care of the ball. <laughs> and I think these last three games that we've played versus MTSU, Gardner-Webb, and obviously here versus Coastal Carolina, it's been evident that those two elements of the game have really improved for us. And like you just said, that's a testament to all of our players because they've really bought in. And it's been great to see, you know, we're not a team where we rely solely just on one or even two guys for a lot of offensive production. You know, it goes across the whole board. And our entire program has bought into that. And no, no more evident than when we play Coastal Carolina. We have 27 to 28 assists. And only seven turnovers. And I think both of those, right, are, are monumental for what we would like to do going forward. And then, again, you spoke to Kyler and Dylan, and, you know, you can go on and on, Chase Martin. Defensively, what we've been able to provide, you know, our team and what those guys have been able to do on the defensive side of the ball has really elevated, in my opinion, not just our defense, but it fuels our offense as well. And, again, you spoke to... Uh, you know, Chase Cormier shooting the ball so well and Jackson being able to bang shots. You know, we really feel if we can get stops and we can get out in transition and even in the half court, mm -hmm. you know, if we don't turn the ball over, we have so many weapons, we're going to get great shots. Obviously, we can't make all of them, but with the caliber of players we have, I feel really good about our chances. You know, if we get to take care of the ball, those shots are going to go in more times than not. A last thought about the balance. We've sat here for a while and haven't even mentioned the high scorer, Coastal Carolina, <laughs> Jeremy Lorenz, who had 22. That's how evenly Absolutely. distributed the offense has been. It's, I mean, we're a team, you know, it was Jeremy uh, versus Coastal Carolina with 22 points and other guys obviously pitched in heavily as well. But I really believe we're a team, depending on what a team tries to do and who they try to take away, different guys have the ability to step up. Mm -hmm. And again, with how we play, obviously scoring gets a lot of attention as it should because at the end of the day, that's what you need in order to win. But we stress to our guys all the time, everyone on our team has the ability to be a playmaker. And sometimes that's actually scoring. Sometimes that's facilitating and passing. And other times that is cutting and screening. And none of those jobs I just mentioned are more valuable than the other. Mm -hmm. And they're all instrumental in being able to generate what we consider a team score. Mm -hmm. And if we can get team scores, and on the other end, we have five guys connected that can generate team stops. If we rinse and repeat that cycle over and over, again, by being tougher, more physical, right, of playing together, and obviously playing harder than the other team, we really like that recipe. And I think these last three games, right, the poof is in the pudding of what that can mean mm -hmm. for our ball club. Finally, a return home. You kind of forget what this place looked like with eight straight road games. You're, you're home against Kentucky Christian um, on Sunday, and boy, I think these guys need a little home cooking, huh? One hundred percent. It's uh, the experience has been great. I think eight straight games away from um, our beautiful arena, but um, the experience has been great. We've been battle tested. We obviously can play. We feel like in any uh, venue, in any location, in any country. But it is great to be back in Jerry Richardson in North Stadium. That's for sure. That's a Sunday game against Kentucky Christian. Then a trip I'm really looking forward to, Oklahoma State, Gallagher-Iba Arena, one of the great basketball barns of all time. And then a final home game before the Southern Conference Wars begin. Before we let you go... Are you able to pay any attention to Southern Conference teams during non-conference? Do you guys have so much work to do with your own team? Or do you kind of look at the scores and maybe dip into a game here or there? Any any initial thoughts about SoCon play uh, thus far? No, you do. I think everyone's different. Some people, um, whether they do or whether they don't, it's completely up to them. I kind of enjoy uh, Southern Conference basketball. Again, it's... Great coaching. It's great high caliber teams. Mm -hmm. So I, I enjoy watching uh, watching games when I can. I enjoy you know checking scores. And so you definitely get a chance to see just a little bit you know what other teams are doing. And again, to no surprise, I mean there's so many good teams that are playing really well right now. Again, like we all knew and expected, it's going to be a heck of a Southern Conference schedule. You know because every night you're facing a great team. Their style of play is unique. Um, and obviously, the, the talent level across the board at all 10 teams 
is definitely nothing short of amazing. Well, we can't wait for the Southern Conference season to begin. Some work to do before that. Thanks so much for the time. Uh, enjoy a couple of, you don't really get any off days, but a couple <laughs> of days without games before we get back at it. Absolutely. Really, um, in, really looking forward to it. All right. For head coach Dwight Perry, I'm Jim Noble. Thanks for watching Inside Wofford Basketball. We will alternate coaches shows with Dwight and women's coach Jimmy Garrity throughout the season beginning in January. So we see you back then.